Thank you all for coming. And we have a distinguished guest today, Mr. James Russell Lingerfeld. And he's going to be speaking to you about story structure, uh, fiction writing for movies, character development, those types of things. I know you've already, you guys are already working on a script. We're already lining the script. And right now we're into uh, setting locations. We were going to be doing that today, but uh, do certain terms. But also, Mr. Uh, Lingerfeld, he is from our area. And uh, so we'll try to uh, leave about somewhere like 10 minutes, 15 minutes before the end of class so you guys can ask questions and get some important answers, okay? All right, so without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Russell Vincent. Uh, so originally, I'm from the Fort Payne area. Uh, you know, I guess you guys know where that is, right? Northeast Alabama. You go on 59. Go past Gaston, Collinsville, and then Fort Payne. That's kind of where I'm from. But I went to Auburn University for my BA, and then I went out to Pepperdine University in Los Angeles for my master's. And uh, long story short, I ended up getting involved in the film industry. Um, studied all of, like, read all of the screenwriting books that you're supposed to read. Did a screenwriting and producing internship in Nashville, Tennessee. Um, got a no novel published, another one's coming along, and Two, two different screenplays I wrote are sitting on some desks right now in Hollywood. So the ball is rolling, but it's going to take a while to get there. But what I was going to share with you is just like basic understanding of how to construct a story um, that meets Hollywood standards for screenwriting. Now, this isn't for, you can use these principles to write a novel and to write a short story, but this is really for screenwriting for movies and uh, television shows. Before you even start on your story, the first thing to do is to um, know exactly what the ending is going to be. Because one of the things that you find in screenwriting, if you like writing stories, that's fun. But when you get into screenwriting, you, you're basically entering boot camp. There's these rules and there's these formulas that you have to follow. And if you look at some of your, your favorite movies, if you'll start analyzing them, you'll find out that everything has a payoff. Uh, nothing, visually, nothing just randomly happens. Um, in, in regards to the dialogue, nothing is just randomly said that doesn't have some kind of payoff. Uh, one of the greatest romances uh, that was ever made was Casablanca. And if you watch Casablanca, you'll find out that every single thing that happens in the first act ends up paying off somehow in the second or the third act. Or if it, every, every single thing that is said, there's no wasted space at all. So the first thing to really do is to, in my opinion, and I found this the easiest, is to really chart out your third act first because that's where everything's headed. That's where all the action is going to be going. That's where all the dialogue is going to be going. What you'll find in feature filmmaking is that every single thing that's said and every single thing that you see has a role. It has a specific role. It's not just a filler. Everything has a payoff. And, and one of the great uh, techniques in screenwriting is to write your third act first. Just go ahead and write the third act because that's where you're headed. Every single thing you write or do before the third act is playing into the third act. The worst thing you want is to have an idea for the third act, write your first act, and your movie go in a completely direction, and you spend two years on it, and then you have to end up tearing the whole thing down and starting over because you didn't have your third act in place. There is a book called Save the Cat. Have you heard of this book? Save the Cat. It's by Blake Snyder. I'm going to recommend three books to you today, and that's the first one, Save the Cat. But it's the sequence approach, Paul, G-U-L-I-N-O. He believes, his theory is, and it works pretty good, that everything should be written in 15-minute increments. So your first 15 minutes is a movie, your second 15 minutes of a, is a movie, your third 15 minutes is a movie, your fourth 15 minutes is a movie, and on and on and on until your movie's finished. So you, you, you write these little mini-movies, that, that make up an entire movie. So it's like a, you know, your protect, something happens to your protagonist, he goes on this journey, there's conflict, and then there's the resolution, and then that throws you into the next sequence. And every single scene is supposed to do that. So each scene is a little mini movie where your main characters are involved in something, there's a little bit of a plot, a journey, conflict, resolution, and that resolution throws you into the next scene, right? And you'll see directors do that. Uh, in the movie Pride and Prejudice, there's a scene the 2005 version with Kira Notley, and she's at a part, uh, they're getting ready for a ball. They're going to go to this big ball. 
and all the girls are, are running around trying to get ready. And she picks up a feather and she's thinking about Mr. Wickham and Mr. Darcy. And she goes, and there's this match cut. As soon as she goes, suddenly the camera goes from the close-up on the feather to a fire that's going. So she goes, and it throws us into the fire that's going. And then we zoom out and we're at the ball. You see how the director did that? It's called a, a smash cut. I think it's a smash or a match cut. So, but that's but they, what they did is they took a scene and that resolution threw us into the other one. Like no breaks, just go, go, go. Right. Okay. So Blake Snyder, Save the Cat, uh, Mr. Juliano, Juliano or Gulino, the sequence approach, and then the third one is a book called Story. And I think it's called The Foundational Elements of Screenwriting or Storytelling Something. But the book is called Story, and it's by Robert McKee. And it's, huge. it's, it's really thick, but he, he is the one that, that teaches you how to write a good story. All three of those books are, are the best. Okay? I've read probably 12 to 15 screenwriting books, and those are the three that I tell people. You need your book on story, and then you need your two screenwriting books, and it's those that I recommend. One of these techniques that they teach you, and it was, when I wrote my first screenplay, it was very hard for me to believe this, but now that I've written, I realize it's actually genius. Just start off with the note cards. You have three acts, and the sequenced approach, if you do do the sequence approach, the sequences will still make up acts. Act one, act two, act three, act four. Uh, have eight to ten note cards per act. So you're going to have about 30 note cards in all. And keep them divided up. Your Act 1 category, your Act 2 category, your Act 3 category. 8 to 10 of cards. And just write on there two to three sentences of what happens in that scene. Maybe just one sentence. Um, three on three tournament. Finn and Oz check out girls. There. That's, that's the scene. All right. Or three on three tournament. Finn meets Eden, the protagonist and the heroine of the story. That's it. Under that, have a category that says conflict. We need conflict in every scene, so what's the conflict going to be in this scene? Okay, well, Finn's going to approach Eden, but the jealous girlfriend's going to get in the way. She's going to step in the way. Okay, so you got, you got situational conflict. There's three types of conflict. Situational, emotional, and natural, like weather. So some of the most intense scenes in your favorite movies will have, it will be pouring that rain outside. That's, that's a strategy. Mr. Darcy and uh, Elizabeth Bennett are having an argument. It's pouring down rain. Uh, why didn't you write me in the notebook? It's pouring down rain. Casablanca, he's at the train station. She leaves a letter for him. It's pouring down rain. They do that for a reason. It's not, oh, you know, it typically rains here a lot, so... We'll, we'll just make it more natural throw rings in it. No, it's strategy. They did that for a reason. They wanted to intensify the conflict. Emotional conflict would be you, the, the main lead asks the girl to the prom and she says no, and then there, there's the look on his face. Or you're Noah Calhoun, you build the house and you find out that Allie's engaged to long. Emotional conflict. You, know, you, you see it on their face. So those are your three types of conflict. Emotional, situational, and then natural like weather. So you need to write on your note card what is going to be the conflict in this scene? And then the third is your character arc. The character arc. A-R-C. How has your character changed? Because in the beginning of the scene, she has to be in a great mood, but you can't leave her in a great mood at the end of the scene. At the end of that scene, she has to be in a different kind of mood. If she's happy in the, in the beginning, she needs to be something that's not happy. Maybe she's agitated. Maybe she's irate. Maybe she's depressed. It can be anything, but she, can't, she cannot be the same at the end of the scene as she was in the beginning of the scene. Now, some of the supporting actors and actresses, okay, but, there's, but your main target, your main person in that scene, they have to be different. Because each scene is a little mini movie, and that propels you into the next. Now, you play around those note cards. You shuffle them around. This note card looks like it should be in Act 3. This Act 3 note card probably should be in Act 2. Play around with it until you get it right where you want it. Erase, rewrite, change. And then when you're pretty confident with the way things are going, bounce it off your friends. Sit down with them tell them. You might even transfer the two to three sentence descriptions once you really nail those down. Transfer those to a Microsoft Word document. 
and just have like bullet points. It's almost like a short story, right? Just bullet points. And then you bounce it off your friends again. And then they say, oh, you know, I don't really like this, but you know what? Hey, maybe he should do this instead. And you're like, oh, that's a brilliant idea. You change it. Then you go back to your note cards and you change your note cards. When every single thing when every single little scene that you explain to your friends has them, it captures them, and everybody thinks it's just fantastic, then you start converting that to screenplay. I would even highly suggest that you take those bullet points and write a short story with it, like you would, like, as if you were to submit it to your English class. Just turn it into a short story. When you finish writing a scene, ask yourself these three questions. Number one, who wants what from who? Second question would be, what happens if they don't get it? And number three, why does it have to happen right now? If you can't answer those questions, you probably don't need your scene, right? Because if it doesn't have to happen right now, if it doesn't have to happen at all, then why, do you, why is it in there? Because every single scene and every single thing that's said is going to have some kind of payoff in the story. 